Hey everyone, welcome to another great episode of Smooth Business Growth Podcast where we share 15 minutes of fast-paced, pure marketing strategies proven to move the needle in your business. So I'm your host and Captain Lindsay Phillips. I'm the founder of Smooth Sailing Business Growth where we help busy entrepreneurs attract and acquire customers faster through powerful and consistent content marketing. In fact, if you go to smoothbusinessgrowth.com, you can actually download your social media roadmap to help you do just that. And, uh, you know, I, I say that we want to move the needle in our business. And a big part of that is PR. And I love the guests I'm having today because we are going to be chatting with PR expert, Alistair Clay, who is on a mission to democratize PR, to help them reach out new audiences and achieve massive success by being in control of their market positioning and their reputation. Um, so we're going to dive into some wicked PR stuff. So let's set sail, people. So welcome aboard, Alistair. Hey there, how are you? Good, from all the way across the pond, as they say. <laughs> Here I am in little old England. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah, we we're talking off the air. Um, of course, I have British blood through my veins, um, having been born there, so we have that in common. And yeah, I wish I was in a pub right now. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too. We could have a few beers and it would be a very lively discussion. Absolutely. Perfect. <laughs> um, I mean, we all know the importance of PR, but it always feels really miserable mysterious like how mm -hmm. do you get it done and you're sort of at the mercy of an expensive PR firm um, and a lot of business owners just don't have any idea of how to handle that why is that I think when you're talking about public relations PR especially media relations so getting your business in kind of you know the mainstream media or big blogs big newspapers TV radio that I think what a lot of people suffer from, maybe startups and smaller businesses, is a kind of a bit of an imposter syndrome. We kind of look at this huge media house, you know, the New York Times or entrepreneur.com or something like this, and we think, you know, they're not going to care about little old me and my little business. And that's, that's absolutely not the truth. So I think one of the biggest things that stops people is that, that fear, actually, and the feeling that they don't have a story or their business isn't big enough for, for the media to care about. And really... And I can say this with some authority as a former journalist. I started off on the Nationals many years ago over in the UK. What a journalist cares about, first and foremost, is do you have something truly newsworthy? They're not that fussed about the size of your business, you know, you're having like an eight-figure turnover or something. But have you done something that's a new, a first, something that's remarkable, something that's counterintuitive, something that's just unusual, either uh, for your sector or for your geography? So this all depends, you know, newsworthiness what we're talking about here yeah. depends on uh you know are you aiming to get in the media like for your town for your country for your sector so you need to understand what type of media you're trying to get and from that you can work out what sort of story you've got so you really can unpack it to take out all the the guesswork and the unknowns and the fear that i think stops people from using the media to get great awareness and credibility for their business because you know nowadays yeah, there are no shortage of methods to, to, to kind of get your business in front of your audience, you know, paid, you know, paid advertising on social media, you know, we can do our own, you know, content led marketing, all of these things are absolutely critical and you should do this, but part of your marketing mix should be using the external media. And I'm seeing more and more actually at the moment, the kind of the wheel has turned full circle in that in a very crowded, noisy online space, getting written about by real trusted authoritative media houses is kind of become more important again in some yeah. ways because it's a way to stand above the crowd frankly and so um you need to kind of know how that system works what how what journalists or what major bloggers are after and then you can kind of start to unpack it for yourselves but i would say it it, it seems like a mystery because Sometimes journalists are really hard to get hold of. And when you yeah. do get hold of them, you don't know the language they speak. You don't know the rules of the game they're playing. You don't know the conversations they're having with their news editor who's screaming at them to get four stories written today. <laughs> and so once, you know, what we try to do with Class PR is to demystify all of that. And then suddenly, and I've seen this time and again with people who've been, who've been through Class PR, they suddenly the fear drops away and they go, do you know what? I have got a great story. My business does deserve to be heard. And they go out there and they get 
great media coverage, media coverage that gets them awareness, of course, mm. that's, that's obvious, gets them credibility, especially yeah. if they're going for investment and things like that. I mean, it's, it sounds cheesy, but investors oh, love to see yeah. that you've been in the New York Times or you've been in Inc. or something like this. And also, you know, it plays, you know, the worlds, I always say, the worlds of SEO and PR have completely merged. You know, there is no, the, the boundary between them is completely dissolved in that if you want to, you know, rank highly organically on Google, being, you know, talked about and listed and having links in real trusted media yeah. websites, that's gold. That's so, true. And having yeah. that, I love like people search for those stamps of like, I was in Huffington Post or I was on NBC All that stuff. or, you know, like, and people automatically, ooh. It's okay. true because, you know, and it's all about the whole PR game actually at the end of the day is about building trust, trust yeah. and reputation. And so, you know, you know, people always talk about, don't make me think when I go to your website. So we want shorthand, quick ways of knowing, can I trust this company mm -hmm. online, this product or this service? And so all that PR is doing really is, okay, say I read the Huffington Post every day. I read the Times in the UK every day. Okay, so I trust those. For me personally, they are my trusted sources right. of information on the world. So if then I see that that media company is writing about a certain business, subconsciously, automatically, I go, okay, so Lindsay's business, they must be worth looking at because if the Huffington Post thinks they're all right, then there must be something worth looking at. And so you are riding on the coattails of that media organization's reputation and it gives you like rocket fuel under your own reputation. Whereas if you're a company that nobody's writing about, nobody's talking about, and just makes it so much harder to kind of yeah. build that trust in your, in your audience. It's a shortcut to trust really. And if you've got trust, then you can sell. Yeah. <laughs> as simple as that. That's so true. I like how you break that down. And it's true. Uh, we just have limiting beliefs on like, well, who's going to write a story about us? Or, you know, yeah. I need to be a big wig in order to make it happen. Mm -hmm. And I love how you say that the focus is on, you know, a story that's newsworthy, not mm -hmm. who you are, where you are, or whatever. So how mm -hmm. do we know if what we have or what's going on with us as a business, how do we know if it's newsworthy? That is a million dollar question. <laughs> and, um, and I would say a word of, um, like a word of warning here is that especially young businesses or startups sometimes, and this is where they get frustrated and perhaps give up, confuse uh, their passion for their business with newsworthiness. So true. Okay. And I'm not wanting to like, you know, quench people's flames of passion. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. You need passion, my God, to keep going when you're setting up a business. I know that, you know, it's fuel, but, um, passion and newsworthiness are not the same thing. And, and you will find that when you pitch, you know, if you could, if you phone up a journalist and go, Oh, we've just launched this new, uh, food business or this new tech business or something. And we really love it. And it's really great. A journalist will go, Great, I'm really happy for you. But what's the story? And so, so that's the first thing is is to to understand that that newsworthiness is, you know, and this is where it's a bit of a kind of a science and an art at the same time. Yeah. Because what's newsworthy for one news editor might not be completely the same for another sure. news. Editor. But broadly speaking, they are looking at the same sorts of things. So. So like I say, say you're wanting to get your business into like the national media. Let's use an example. You want to get in the New York Times or something like that. So therefore, you know, that is a huge media brand, you know, globally recognized. So the bar there for what's going to make you newsworthy is high. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you are competing with hundreds of other businesses to get your story to say a column that looks at the most exciting startup business that's around. Just this week, uh, I spoke to a colleague um, who's a journalist on The Guardian over in the UK that I know a lot of your listeners yeah, will be familiar yeah, with The Guardian. On. And she gets 200 pitches a day. Wow. <laughs> okay, so uh, working week, that's about 1,000. So, yeah, I um, thought my inbox was insane. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, okay, they're maybe not all direct, but, you know, that's the yeah. volume of, 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 of approaches she's getting. So, so, the bar, so, so if you know that you're trying to get into the nationals, and this is not to put people off, but you need to think of how you can present your business, something about it that is a first, something about your technology or product that you, or your service that you've developed that's never been done before, that right. something is remarkable about it, something is, is kind of um, is changing your customers' behaviors, having a huge impact on their lives, or crucially, 
is something that has you know that you have overcome to launch this business. So you yourself, especially as a founder, are newsworthy. And the way we we we, we look at this, there are kind of nine questions. So take the guesswork out again that you can uh, ask yourself about your business about to find out have you got a story that the media are going to are going to uh, be interested in. Now, like I say, if we go to the New York Times, now the bar is high, and 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 what a mistake you know, people make is that they don't actually go and read the media that they're trying to get their business featured in. Right. So, you know, so study, become a student. You know, f- so if you say, I want to be in the New York times, I want to be in the guardian, I want to be on CNN, find the slot where your business features because news is actually very formulaic. So there will be a particular slot, say, um, you know, in the New York Times or in the Guardian, so where they every week they feature a new startup or something like that. So that's the yeah. slot you fit in. So look at it, find out the journalist who writes about it, follow them, and look at their tone and look at the things that excite them. Okay, so let's look at the nationals. The bar is high, and so there are three types of stories you're basically going to be pitching: is it a business story, is it a human interest story, or is it a kind of an events-based story? Right. Now, if it's a business story, okay, so these are the, these those are the three main categories and within each of those there are three questions Mm. nine questions and that is it those are the only types of news story that you can have whatever you have will fit under one of these Mm. so if it's a business story is it a story about a product or service innovation so what you're doing your product your service you know is it a first is it new are you the first person in america to do it are you the first person in the uk or europe to do it you know what makes it new maybe it's a new a new app that's never been uh, launched before that allows me to i don't know order a hairdresser around to my house or something at a certain time I, i'm just <laughs> still an example but, you know is that and th- if you look there will be something new about it otherwise it's probably not going to be a business that's going to survive anyway <laughs> um like i say if the bar is the you know the nationals then it's it's high if you're trying to get big regional media and i wouldn't be sniffy about regional media because um it can be a good way to kind of practice your yeah. your PR, test your PR muscles out. And also, slight aside here, if you're trying to get national media coverage, the journalist will Google you. And if they can see that your big local or regional press has been writing about you, we've had some regional TV, they'll think, okay, these guys are kind of on the up. People are talking Sometimes, about them. Yeah. Or, 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 or a big blog has been writing about them. So don't discuss, don't just think I've got to be in the New York Times or nothing else. You know, start off lower where the news bar is lower. So you've got those three questions for is it a business story? Is it a story about product or service innovation? Is it a story about a business model innovation? So is the way in which you're creating this uh, business new in itself or the way you work is there something new about it you know don't discount that there could be something interesting about the way in which you're creating this product i don't know maybe something particularly ethical about it or it's it's you're working in a particularly sustainable way or you're using ai or something like that you know or, or blockchain technology that's never been used before and thirdly you know how crucially and this is where a lot of your news stories will be it's how have you changed your consumer's behavior so it may be through case studies of how you look what you've done with your consumers or or maybe you survey your consumers and you can see that i don't know say you're a a money saving app or something like this then you've saved you know 10 million pounds in the first month since launch for your consumers or again a silly example but think about the results orientated absolutely so within those three questions you will have a business news story secondly we come on to human interest so it, first question here, is this a story about personal achievement? So, you know, have you, are you the first, uh, I, I think there was, a, there was a story in the UK recently, it was the first woman ever to become a tailor on Savile Row in London. Savile Row is like the posh place where mm. suits have been made for hundreds of years. There was a woman, she was the first woman, bizarrely, in 2018 to have wow. achieved this. I know, crazy, right? Um, so, so, you know, is there some sort of personal achievement in what you've done to get your business off the ground? Or are you the first woman to do it or the first person under 25 to have a 10-figure business in, in your sector or something like that? So think about what makes you, uh, as, a, as a founder, newsworthy. Secondly, is it a story about extremes? Now, this is a slightly unusual one for human interest, but this is a, you know, a lot of charities also listen to, to, uh, to you know, have we put through our course, and it's, you know, they'll often have fundraiser stories and things like this. So, you know, if you're looking to kind of, you know, inspire fundraisers, you know, you need to have real stories of extremes, people doing ridiculous challenges to kind of get that into the, yeah. into the media. Otherwise, 
you know, somebody running half a marathon, that's, that's not really useful. Really. Family odds or, yeah. Exactly, all that sort of stuff. And that leads nicely onto the third one for human interest. You know, is it a story about overcoming adversity? Right. And this particularly applies when people are getting their businesses off the ground. You know, somebody who went bankrupt, mm -hmm. uh, a mum who raised her three children on her own, somebody who overcame, you know, um, an illness, you know, to kind of get their business off the ground and to succeed. The media love those triumph over adversity stories. Yeah. And, we may be slightly reluctant as business founders sometimes to put ourselves front and center of this thing, but particularly at the beginning, sharing that personal story. And again, this was borne out in the conversation I had with the Guardian the other day. They want that because readers want to know what, you know, you know, how did this person overcome this challenge? And that inspires me to kind of want to do the same thing. So sharing your own personal story is, is really, really impactful when you're trying to get that sort of PR at the beginning of your business journey. And crucially, don't then think, oh, I've got to sell, send my, sell my sob story until the end of time or something. <laughs> not, not at all. But what it means is you get your foot in the door with the media at the beginning of your business yeah. life. And then you start to build those relationships with journalists. And PR is one of those things that becomes a self-fulfilling circle. Um, Self-fulfilling prophecy, sorry, virtuous circle, mixing my metaphors. So the more coverage you get, the more coverage you get. Yeah. Because, because journalists are very habitual, actually. And once they can see that, oh, you know, Lindsay's business, she says she brings some real insights to the sector, or, you know, they're doing really interesting things, or they're launching really interesting products and services, that will obviously start to appear on Google. And journalists then, they want to know they're writing about winners as well. Yeah. So the more coverage you have, the more coverage you'll get. So, so using your personal story at the beginning can be a great way to open that door because I always say getting PR at the beginning, the momentum at the beginning is tough and it's a bit like pushing a car with the handbrake off, right? So <laughs> to start, you got to put a lot of effort in, but then once it's rolling, you can kind of move yeah. that thing with one hand and it's the same, it's the same with PR. And then thirdly, the third type of news story you could have are events. So, you know, do you have a story about a launch? Is this a story uh, related to an existing news event? So is there something else going on in your sector? Is there a government report launch? You know, it has a massive competitor in your sector. I don't know, say, um, I don't know, say there's an airline that's just launched a new, a new, uh, a new route of flights or something like that. Are you uh, working in the travel industry and think, oh, maybe we could, uh, we could kind of ride on the back of that news and we could get some uh, some press coverage for the fact that you know we're a travel agency and we we run we have tours to that destination or something like this to so be looking at things that are linked to your business and so that type of news jacking is a really powerful way to get into the to, into the media as well because often um i don't know you'll see like say there's a massive sports event i don't know like the super bowl or something like that y you know maybe be you are, I don't know, you make, um, you make uh, the furniture or something like this and you think, oh, people are going to be sitting on their chairs to watch this or something. Is there a way that you can kind yeah, of spin it, spin it you know, to, to kind of survey your customers or something like this? Uh, or, you know, I don't know, there could be a great example of people are going to sit down for this many minutes so that, you know, that amount of time is going to be sat on our chairs during the Super Bowl or something silly like yeah. this. But there's always a way to spin it to kind That's of true. get an angle for you. And then thirdly in events, always think about the tried and tested awareness days and things like this because there are, I mean, crikey, there are awareness days for everything under the sun this oh day. God, national is, Pigeon yeah. Week, National Cheese Day, <laughs> National, <laughs> national, day, national yeah. Vacuum Cleaner Day. Exactly. Yeah. And so the journalists, the, the journalist media are very, uh, they're a bit wary of a lot of those, but there will be certain ones like, like, like over in the UK at the moment, it's like Mental Health Awareness Week. Yeah. So that's a serious one. That, um, that, that businesses, you know, I've got a friend who runs a business and they kind of teach mindfulness in the workplace. He's all over the news at the moment because yeah. he's talking about the benefits of that um, for, for driving up productivity, actually, you know, happiness for work, for, for co-workers, but also driving up productivity for the business. So always think laterally and be creative and think, where is there an opportunity for me to offer comment and opinion that is related to a bigger news story? So if you think about it, the three areas really are stories about your business. So like what's new about you, what's innovative, what's remarkable, what's, what's, what's different about your product or service or the new product you're launching. Secondly, what's newsworthy about me as a founder, my motivations, my backstory, my history, you know, maybe I was a, 
a lawyer and now I want to run this social enterprise, you know, sort of getting technology to the poorest parts of society or something. You know, that's counterintuitive. That's like, what? Yeah. So I left this, unusual. You know, seven, unusual. Exactly. That's how journalists think. And then thirdly, events. So what's going on outside me and outside of my business with issues that I care about that I can offer comment and opinion on because I tell you journalists are always looking for talking heads they're talking for they're talking for they're looking for quotes they're looking for a fresh angle on the story and the, what I always say that, that kind of unites all of this is never think about the media in terms of um, how can they write about my business because if you yeah. approach it like that they see that a mile off. Oh and God. Yeah. They're not an advertising company. So you think about it from the point of how can I help the journalists do their job yeah. and you will succeed. I love you that. Might, you know, maybe not first time, but you know, if you stick at it, yeah. a lot of people give up too soon. You'll, you'll get the media coverage you're after. I love that. You have given some amazing advice and a lot of different angles and just make it not so scary, right? It can be done. It's it, honestly, that's the biggest thing I've seen. Like I remember the first ever kind of masterclass I ran where we actually kind of hired a space and got like 10 re I found through a kind of Twitter competition. Actually, I found 10 really inspiring businesses from across the UK. I got them in a room. And I said, right, you're here because I kind of want to film this course and all this sort of stuff. So you're going to get all this for free. And at the beginning of the week, I said, right, who thinks here they can kind of get a story on the BBC over in the UK and in the Times? And like, nobody put their hand up. Oh, you know, yeah, totally. Totally, <laughs> totally terrified. But by the end of the week, it was completely transformed. And, you know, and since then, many of them have gone on to do yeah. just that, you know. And so, you know, it's, you know, once you understand the rules of the game, then yeah. you kind of know how to play. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. And, that totally makes sense. You, you know, and, and, and what makes things newsworthy, there are formulas to it, like I say, and also not to take it personally as well. Yeah. So like somebody saying, you haven't got a story or whatever, doesn't mean your business sucks and you should give up. Not at all. It just means you haven't kind of presented it you know, in the right way. And, and, and a mistake people make as well is that, this was something that came out again when I was talking to this friend from The Guardian the other day, People, you know, rookies at PR will, uh, you know, open the New York Times or go to entrepreneur.com and see a story that basically could be them. They go, oh, my God, we're doing this or, or you know, this, yeah, yeah. this could be us. And then they contact the journalist and go, oh, you did this yesterday. Would you like to do us? And that <laughs> drives uh, <no>. journalists. <laughs> Honestly, that drives, oh, I can well imagine. that drives them crazy because it's like, well, well, I did that story yesterday. Oh, no, like, no. You know, so yesterday. <laughs> you know, news moves fast. Now, if you see that and think, we can bring a new angle on this, yeah, or yeah. actually what he didn't look at, what she didn't look at, then they will love you for it because journalists live and die on the strength of their ideas and, yeah. and, the, and the quality of the newness of the stories they're bringing. And they, don't forget, they got a boss to pitch to as well. Yeah. So they don't want to look silly. That page is to <laughs> that's it. That's it. So if you can help them do their job, um, then then they'll love you for it. And they won't, you know, like I say, they won't kind of, you know, slam the phone down on you or just keep hitting delete on your emails. But you've got to think, you know, it's, it's not that difficult. Once you kind of research the sorts of things they write about, why and think, why have they written about this? What's new about this story? Why have they written about this business that, um, I don't know, let's say is, is, is developing a, doorstep delivery service for vitamins and minerals or something is supplements but why are they written here what's new and you'll find that there will be something new they'll either be like the first in new york to do it or the first to do it on a subscription basis or something like this and then say okay so let's bring that 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 lens that news lens to our business what are we doing that's new and you know maybe you don't have something today that's going to make the new york times or something like this but you but will have those, some if those seeds are in your head and you're thinking exactly. that exactly right? exactly Exactly. And you will, uh, and like I say, let's start lower down. So, so think, okay, so there's a media that covers my sector. So like, you know, for me, I work in PR. There's in the UK, there's PR week magazine. They're going to be interested in me because I'm working in this space. And so mm -hmm. they have to cover news that is relevant to this sector. And so say I'm, I'm developing a new gluten-free bread or something, you know, there will be a, there's a whole gluten-free media out oh, there of yeah. bloggers and podcasters. And so, you know, they're going to want to, they will care about your story. So, so practice, you know, sharing your story at that lower level of media 
and then you know as you kind of get used to that you know you may you 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 understand how the game works more and more and more and then you can go okay now let's really punch into the mainstream media and what you do what i have seen actually as well is that some businesses as they've really got their heads around what makes things newsworthy who their audiences really are and the kind of messages they're trying to get to them it actually changes the way they run their businesses cool I mean, you've given so much insight. Now, I know we've sort of run out of time, but I want people to know where to go to find you because I know you've got courses and a free press release template that they can uh, dive into so that they can be empowered and do it on their own. So where do they need to go? Absolutely. So head over to class or class, depending on your accent, <laughs> class, class-pr.com. And on that homepage there, you'll just see uh, get the template. So you just click on get the template and that is a free press release template. And now what is really powerful about this document is it's not just kind of how to put a list of information on a page to send to a journalist. Essentially what this press release template teaches you is how to construct a news story from a killer headline to that intro par with the news hook in that a journalist won't be able to ignore, where to put your quotes, where to put your key messages. It takes you step by step through how to create a press release that is going to put you ahead of the pack when you're trying to get the attention of a journalist. So head over to class-pr.com and click on get the template. Perfect. Thanks for that. So thank you so much. I know these uh, podcasts goes by fast, but that was quick. I know you get lots <laughs> of information to move people in their business and help them with PR. So thank you again for, for coming on my show. My pleasure. It's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for having me on. Awesome. So folks, if you are looking to achieve faster growth through blog, video, podcast, and social media marketing, look no further than smoothbusinessgrowth.com. So have a profitable and productive week and may the wins always be at your back. Mm -hmm.